Uh, my first opponent in the round of eight is going to be the Chinese player Zoro. Uh, hard four, 我对他的了解就呃、uh, 大概就只有呃嘉、uh, 年华遇险啊，还有啊、uh, 暴雪就是嘉年华前十六进八的时候，就只单单就这些，其实了解的也并不多。I've played a lot of video games throughout my life, and Hearthstone was the type of game that I realized that I could be a hundred percent at. Ah, I think, uh, uh, this, uh, he is a professional player, but I think, uh, I am not as good as him. Between being a full-time and part-time player, there are some advantages to being a full-time player. Between being a full-time and part-time player, there are some advantages to being a full-time player. Where obviously you're getting more practice. Actually, uh, this. 呃，炉石传说这款游戏就是，这这点特别吸引人，就是它就是呃，不是靠时呃，它时间只要积累到也你有一定的经验就行了，不是呃，纯属靠时间来磨练一个的一个优秀的选手。A part-time player like Zoro can do a lot of things to maximize their time. First of all, you want to start with what you find the most fun, because if you're not having fun, then it's not going to be. Something that you're going to continue doing. Actually, mind, those, uh, that is, influence, display, those things, actually, are more important. I think. However, although he has many supporters, I will try to win the victory. It does feel good to be representing the Americas, and I try to do my best to represent the Americas. It does feel good to be representing the Americas, and I try to do my best to represent the Americas. Welcome back, everybody, to Hearthstone World Championships. I'm your host, Nam Shalem, joined by Robert and Savi at the desk. How are you guys? Great. Uh, obviously, we just witnessed a really fast-paced match between uh, Daimong uh, and Kano, and Kano took that very convincingly, and it was awesome to see. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was really fast. And the next one might be something completely different. We have, we have Hot Form, the only North American remaining in the tournament, playing his Tempo Mage. Versus uh, Zoro, who has uh, who's bringing an aggressive match uh, lineup as well. So, who do you guys uh, think gonna take it? I, I gotta go with Hot Form. He's been doing really well, and um, he also bought Rogue. And bringing Rogue has been quite good for the, for the other players. I believe the the only other players to bring Rogue have been Tyson, Ostkaka, and both of them made it through. Yeah. Do you agree I, uh, with? I have to go with Hot Form as well. Uh, I think these two players, uh, both are very interesting, but they're kind of coming in at different points in their competitive careers and kind of what their understanding of what they're trying to accomplish is. And Zoro seems uh, like a really skilled player, but I just feel like Hot Form uh, has shown a really strangely potent high IQ play style that has really worked out for him all the way back to the round of 40, so. My heart is with Zoro. Zoro is from China, and uh, his favorite character from anime is Zoro from One Piece. And you know, he's like trying to become a better player all the time. He had to hide from his parents to play Hearthstone. He was going outside. They didn't even know this. he's playing the game. Well, well, now they know, I yeah. hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now, now they actually know that he's playing Hearthstone. And he's facing uh, hot, for, um, hot Form here in the, the quarterfinal. So what do you guys think about the matchups? Uh, as Smee's kind of brought up, uh, Tempo uh, Mage has been really good for Hot Form thus far. Uh, we've seen three players really try to bring Hot or uh, Tempo Mage so far, and each have been really different and kind of stylistically definitive of what they believe the deck should be. And Hot Forms is extremely consistent. He kind of relies on Nexus Champ Sarad to get him uh, the extra cards that give him the advantage to win. But uh, I think based on the rest of the matchup, as you said, uh, obviously Zoro has a very aggressive lineup, and I don't think Hot Forms too bothered by that. He actually really looks down on aggro in general. And he tends to play decks that are more, uh, I guess, efficient at preying upon them. So, again, I, I gotta give that one to Hot Form. Yeah, both players with Druid as well. Druid is the most popular class in this tournament. And uh, for game one, we are going to see Zoro playing his Paladin against Hot Form's Tempo Mage. All right, so that's gonna be a secret Paladin versus Tempo Mage. And the Tempo Mage he's playing is very specific to him. He's playing double mirror images, I believe, and one unstable portal. Sarada, as you mentioned. Uh, is the deck that good? Uh, so obviously Tempo Mage uh, is a huge point of contention, I think, in the competitive scenes. Because you, you may agree or disagree with me on this, but uh, a lot of players think it's entirely too random. There's too much variance. You, you cannot actually rely on it to perform very well. Uh, in the other camp, you know, players like Jab and Hot Form have sworn up and down that this deck can be very good and very consistent based on the fact that you are... There are some things you can rely on, right? Spellslinger, random spells, but you get the 3-4 body. Unstable Portal, you're always going to get a minion that is technically cheaper than what you would have paid otherwise. So. I tend to err on the side that I think this is a very solid deck, mostly because of Flame Waker. Flame Waker's ability to really uh, hinder the board of aggro players, uh, I think it makes it extremely reliable and solid. 
Yeah, sometimes you draw too many spells earlier and it might not curve out that nicely. Playing Mana Worm on turn one versus not playing a Mana, term, mana Worm on turn one. There's a huge difference that Mana Worm can easily chip up to maybe eight or even ten damage. And uh, here we see that all spell hand from Hot Form. But the Unstable Portal kind of counts as a minion, right? Yeah, it is kind of like a minion, especially if you get a free mana minion, you can play it for free, so you get a, a really good value there. But uh, Zoro got the Knife Jogger into Master for Battle, so a really good opening. And uh, how do you guys feel about this matchup? Because I think if Mage gets that Flame Waker that you mentioned, Robert, Mage will be in a good position, but if he misses the Flame Waker, Paladin can actually expand his board and rush the Mage down. I think it's important for the Tempo Mage, and, and we see this in Hot Form pointing out the, the Apprentice, uh, Name is case right now, but uh, we see that he's really prepared for the ag aggressive start. And I think so long as he keeps that in mind and he's constantly trying to play not greedy, that's the biggest thing. I don't think he can afford to play greedy in this matchup because all of a sudden the board snowballs out of control and then he's in a bad spot. So I think so long as he keeps that in mind, which it seems he's doing thus far, I think he'll be in a good spot. He can unstable portal and flame can in this turn, which is great. Treads. <laughs> Whoa, Dread Steel against the Paladin, which most likely doesn't have any way to remove it. So as soon as Hot from plays that minion, it will be there till the end. Uh, great Sorcerer's Apprentice from Hot from on turn one, getting amazing value from it. Discounts on two spells this turn, potentially at least on one on the following turn as well. And because he also got the Dress Steed, uh, he can think about not attacking. Uh, it might be Noble Sacrifice, so he might not want to uh, lose the free 2 here, especially because he gets Arcane Flake on next turn for two mana, and then a possible Frost Bull as well, if there is a second Juggler maybe, or something we can remove. I think it's uh, worth looking at a strat seed now and trying to figure out how this is going to work in this game because obviously the Paladin Hero Power allows him to create 1-1 one, one minions and Dread Steed can just trade out over and over for 1-1s. One, yeah. uh, so we might actually see it get a lot of value. Like obviously when you take into account stuff like Avenge, Redemption, Noble Sacrifice, it might not get as much value, but there's still a lot of value in having this small horse that's just eating away at your 1-1s. One, Absolutely. Definitely an easy way to deal with something like that. Like the, the Noble Sacrifice that Zoro has right now. Hot from picking up another Sorcerer's Apprentice, but this might not be the time for it. I, I think the, this turn could be the Dreadsteed turn. Yeah, Dreadsteed uh, and Mad Scientist, maybe. Uh, you will not be able to attack really this. Uh, if you attack with the 3 2, it will die to the Noble Sacrifice. So probably you don't really want to do anything. Um, Frostbolt can help you with the Secret Keeper. He decides to attacks here, so the yeah, 2 is going to die to the Noble Sacrifice. Yeah. He's going to make the attack. There was a possibility that, is, that the secret was something else than the Noble Sacrifice, and in that case, Hotform would have been rewarded for that attack. What could it possibly have been? He's seen Juggler uh, dying before the Noble Sacrifice? because Avenge? It could have been Avenge. Even, even against Avenge, I think it would have been fine to, 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 for the Shield and Mini, but to get buffed in that situation. Yeah. And I here, here Zoro with four mana, Shield and Mini, but getting an easy trade on the, on the Mad Scientist. Has his Redemption and a Gog Hammer to follow it up. Yeah, the Redemption is really good because not only if it hits uh, the Shield and Mini, but it will come back with the Shield. Secret Keeper is being buffed right now to a 2-3 minion. So this is interesting now because Dreadsteed will basically just stay on the board the whole game. Yeah. Uh, because there's no point to trading with it. You, you can't get rid of it unless Zoro finds a Silence. Uh, it's just going to keep being there to ping Divine Shields, pick off 1-1. One, one. So it may not seem like the biggest thing right now, but over the course of this game, uh, again, there's going to be a lot of value coming from this Dread Seed. Absolutely. This game is not go going to end in the next three turns. This Dread Seed is staying till till dinner. <laughs> <laughs> there's the Fire Blast finishing off Secret Keeper. Not too much value for a Zoro from that Redemption. Pilot is Shredder, definitely a good pickup here. You can also found a, a pipe drop, which maybe a low tip would have been even better, but Pilot Shredder, one of the better cards. Yeah, this deck is not playing that many pipe drops, right? It's like Sludge Belcher, one copy, um, low tip. Low tip, yeah. Mm, but yeah. Uh, pretty much just that. So uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if there's any real decision here. Yeah, oh, he's going to go for the Master for Battle, wants to get those minions. With Master for Battle? As many as he can. It does allow him to also hero power. It is actually mana efficient, and he is putting the same amount of power supposedly on board for attack. And then next turn, if he doesn't pick up anything specific, he'll be able to play Pilot Shredder with the hero power as well. Yeah, probably the reason why he didn't go for the Pilot Shredder is the secret from Hot Form, which could have been that mirror entity. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And he knows that Hot Form is playing double mirror entity version. I love that Dread Steed animation, by the way. It's, uh, it's really cool looking, and obviously we're going to get to see a lot of it uh, over the course of this game. But Divine Favor is pretty reasonable here. You're going to end up getting three cards off of it. Uh, you still have half of your mana pool to work with for the turn. Yep, that's Secret Keeper. It's going to allow Zoro to deal with um, potential meter entry quite easily. Yep, and there it is. Oh, yeah, so right. that, was, that Divine Favor uh, ultimately paid off for 
uh, Zoro pretty handsomely. Yeah, definitely a good pick up there. So the strategy for Zoro is you, you can think about killing the one two, but on the other hand, you also want to be aggressive and really deal a lot of damage. Mage should not have a way to heal itself. So this will be a race. On the other hand, Hot Form is running one Flame Strike, I believe. So turn seven is coming uh, really fast. Yeah, but it's not turn seven yet. So Hot Form could uh, wait for a little bit here and uh, not go for the Azure Drake just yet. But there could be something like Arcane Missiles coming as well. So because of that, he might just want to clear the Drake already. Yeah, and obviously if this game goes too long, uh you know, Hot Form will find stuff like Archmage Antonidas or Nexus Champs Rod, which will allow him to win in the late game uh, over the Paladin, even with something as here or a powerful as Mysterious Challenger. So uh, Zoro kind of has to be considered that. Still feels he's in early enough stages where he can make some trades, try to get stuff like Azure Drake off the board. And we see Flame Waker now in the hand of Hot Form. Yeah, they have Flame Waker comps. Uh, a lot of spells have been used, but there is still this Arcane Insect that will work with it. Uh, interesting decision from Zoro to not use the weapon to help out with the clears. He could have saved one more uh, recruit, but he values his life total higher I than, mean, than the extra. They're very replaceable, so he can make more. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but it does cost some mana. Ooh, that is... Okay, so... Uh, mirror Image with Flame Waker. Be very, very powerful uh, against the board full of 1-1s. Yeah, it's really good versus the 1-1s and also very good versus the weapon classes. So if Hot Form is able to clear the board at some point, he will be able to block the Truth of the Champion attacks with those 0 2. I want to say we're up to three points of damage now from the Dreadsteed. Uh, I, <laughs> I will be absolutely tickled if Dreadsteed ends up being the deciding factor in this game because it cleared off Divine Shields. It's kind of a deciding it. factor. I think it's piling up. Yeah, it's, it's just going to sit there and continue to be a nuisance. Yeah, seems like this game is going to go on for quite a while. Mm. Zoro still at full HP while Hot Form at 21 and a good amount of uh, things on the on his side of the board. Yeah, we also see uh, Hot Form has Water Elemental in hand, and that's another card where I was talking about earlier when Tempo Mage players are kind of building their, their lists. They have, uh, you know, obviously at the 4 drop, usually you want to have something like Shredder. And what we see, nice obviously, Water thing. Elemental is a great choice uh, for Hot Form as it allows him to uh, lock up enemy melee heroes that can't use the weapons. Uh, obviously, 3-6 stat line is super difficult for a lot of the current decks to get rid of, so Water Elemental is another one of those cards that Hot Form just feels very strongly about is worth having in Tempo Mage that other players don't necessarily show that uh, thought. This is such a tricky turn for Zoro, because if he goes for it, he knows there's the Mad Scientist. The Mad Scientist means there will be a secret. The secret is mirror entity, so if Hot Form has a way to deal with all those minions, he will essentially block Tyrion from being played. Absolutely, and that Mad Scientist is finding an excellent trade. Dealing with that juggler and getting the secret up, which will, will like you said, prevent the, prevent the Zoro from playing that extremely powerful Tyrion portrait. And how can you not play Tyrion? There's Dr. Boom, you have to do something. Repentance is not, it's not going to help you at all. No, but you can't play. There's no way he can play it in the, in the mirror entry. You can kill the token with the weapon attack and then the Lessing of Kings and kill Dr. Boom. So that's something. It is, and it's, it might be the be the option he chooses to go with because it's the least painful. Obviously, if you give your opponent Tyrion, you probably just lost there. Uh, but it, it is by no means an efficient play. He does not want to have to do this. Can he go for face and try racing here? Uh, I don't think so. All he has in hand is Tyrion. Uh, and, you know, eight damage is it, certainly a lot of damage, but it, it's bound to be cleared next turn. There's no way that survives, so... Uh, I don't, I don't know. So you should think. I think it's an interesting idea because Hotprom does have way more cards in his hand than Zoro does. So desperate times call for desperate measures. So Zoro could have maybe tried to go for that and hope that the boom bots and the threats did, wouldn't had cleared the shredder easily. Right. Such a bad spot for Zoro, sitting on the tier, and he knows this is a mirror entity. The threats did killing another, another dude, like even more damage. Yep, Hotprom going for. It seems to be a Flame Waker and the Frostbolt. Yeah, Repentance is going to change Flame Waker's health down to one. Uh, unless Zoro top decks a uh, Consecration. Well, actually, no, he can be pinged off by the, uh, by the Light's Justice, so... Yeah. That does, uh, that does make a fair bit of difference, although, obviously, Zoro is still in a really bad way. There is redemption. Oh, wow. And this, this kind of goes back to why in uh, the round of 40 and even the, the North America, the America's Championship, Seeker Paladin was not popular. People were not bringing it. And the problem is exactly what's happening here. He's now at a point where he did not draw Mysterious Challenger. He's just drawing secrets. And, uh, you know, obviously you have certain cards you would like to draw on a given point oh, in a deck. Wonder. But uh, the cards you don't want to be drawing as a, as a Seeker Paladin are so much worse than the cards you want to be drawing. And 
we see, you know, Repentance, Redemption, and they're not going to get it done for him, and he's already so far behind, so Absolutely. Secret Paladin, a little bit inconsistent, at least in this first match. It, it happens from time to time, but is Zoro forced to go with the Redemption Tyrion here? If his Tyrion dies, he will he will get the Ashbringer, but there is that War Elemental. I don't think there's any value at all in playing the Redemption. If he plays the Redemption, he cannot hero power because the, the Silverhand Recruit would uh, would <laughs> trigger the Redemption in that case. I wonder. It doesn't accomplish anything at all. Well, if you play Redemption, you go for Tyrion. Yeah, I, I would think so. But how can you go for it and give the Mage an 8-8 with Divine Shield? And, and Ashbringer. And Ashbringer, yeah. It might finally be time for Nexus Champs Rod to come down. Uh, Hot Farm has been very disciplined about not using it. Obviously, you know, he wants to explore uh, what he thinks gives him better outs to just win the game. but. I'm excited to see Nexus Champs Rad. One of my Absolutely. favorite cards. Uh, yeah. Great card from the Grand Tournament. We'll see what spell he gets. Not, I mean, that's super relevant in this game because it looks like he's kind of got this one locked up, but. <laughs> oh, wow. So, wow. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, I, I love people who say like it's a random card because you get a random spell, but it is a spell you can actually use. And Flame Waker uses spells. So, whatever you actually get, you will be able to get some value from it at least. Right. It obviously has great synergy with Flame Waker. It has synergy with uh, Mana Worm. It has synergy with Sorcerer's Apprentice. So, it fits in the deck perfectly. Uh, it, it's just also one of those cards where uh, it generates additional resources. And Tempo Mage traditionally runs into an issue where they don't get it. And uh, everybody in the board is putting their faith in the light. And then yep. concede. All right, and that's it. Hot Farm takes game number one, and he is in the lead with his mage. A really impressive play. Well, Zoro, Zoro was missing the, a couple of cards there. It seemed like he was playing off curve a bit, and you know, a, the Paladin betrayed it. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about the consistency of this deck, but that Dread Steed was quite consistent with dealing one damage each turn, and it did help Hot Farm quite a bit. Yeah, that, it helped a lot. I was going to say, I'm sure there are a number of uh, players watching at home who wish their ladder experience against Seeker Paladin uh, went like that, where the Seeker Paladin just doesn't really draw a Mysterious Challenger, doesn't draw any of those big things. But uh, yeah, unfortunate for Zoro, but you know, still more than enough series to get back into. Absolutely. It. Because it's good that you're mentioning it. If, if Secret Paladin actually drops uh, Sh a Shredder on four, then Belcher on five or Lothab, and the Mysterious Challenger on six into Boom into um, Tyrion, it's really hard to stop it as right. a deck. But uh, sometimes they don't, because they have so many secrets, and it can happen. I feel like the Flame Waker Mage um, has an all right matchup versus Secret Paladin overall. It is all right, but it can definitely go both, both ways. It's not a matchup which would heavily favor one or, or the other. Right. Absolutely. So what do you guys think uh, he's going to take next? So for Hot Form, Mage is locked. He can't play Mage anymore. He still has the Rogue and the Druid. What's the next class you, you take? From, from Hot Form, uh, I don't know, it, it's a conquest after all, so there's a lot of uh, guessing games going on, and they might try to uh, m mind game here each other and just try to, try to predict the class from the other player, but sometimes players also choose to go for, for the random pick and just uh, kind of go with the guess. Do you agree, Robert? Yeah, I think that uh, sounds about right. There's no, I don't necessarily think there's a definitive strategy here that uh, Hotform's going to use. All right, uh, before we jump to another game, we have an interview with Hotform for you guys, so let's see that. My name is Dylan Mullins, my gamer tag is Hotform, and my team is Root Gaming. Uh, so my name comes from my World of Warcraft character. My Druid was my first character that I did really well on, and Druids used Healing Over Time, which abbreviates to H-O-T, so that was the Hot, and Druids used Shape Shifting, so that was the Form. So that was Hotform, and the name kind of stuck. I don't think that there's too much pressure that I feel on me about being the last standing America's player. It's cool to be able to represent those regions, but that's not why I'm here playing. I'm here playing just to show that I can do it as a person. I'm happy to be uh, receiving some of the cheers from the awesome people in the audience, but it's more about uh, doing it for me. I can play a cool guy on camera, and I think people like to watch like what James Bond would do playing Hearthstone, right? So I can play a cool guy off camera, I'm just a normal dude, right? But on camera, um, I think it's more interesting to see someone that has that interesting factor, that mystery about them. My parents uh, engaged me and my brother in reading out loud every night. And one of the books I can remember the most was Lord of the Rings and that ability to read a really advanced material and talking out loud to other people gave me a lot of confidence to be able to speak to other people in the future. 
I think the best way to enjoy yourself when you're playing a game like Hearthstone is just to make sure that you're having fun. When you're remembering that you're playing it as a game and that your main goal there is to enjoy yourself and have a good experience, I think that takes priority over any competition you should be feeling. I think some of the most fun that I had while I was here was visiting some of the other teams from the different games. We're all in the same area and being able to just walk over and say, hey, what's up? And talk to them about their game, talk a little about your game. You get to make so many connections with these super cool people. If I win BlizzCon, I would love to use the power that I get and maybe the standing that I get from that win to provide some more content for the viewers, bring more um, creativity to the game. And I already feel like I can do that to some degree, but getting that additional recognition of being the BlizzCon champion would be amazing just to show the amount of variety that can take place in a game like Hearthstone. <laughs> What's my happy place? Okay, so my happy place isn't necessarily a place in my mind. For me, it's walking somewhere, walking either outside, uh, normally just on my own. It's a good time to be at peace with yourself, kind of see the world out there and make sure I step outside my own house as much as possible, given that I'm inside playing video games so often. It's kind of a way to take yourself back into reality after you exist in the internet space for so long. If I win BlizzCon, you'll be seeing a whole lot more of me. Hot for He's a normal dude in real life, and he's James Bond on camera. Savi, what do you think about it? Self-proclaimed James Bond of Hearthstone. He's bringing the mystery, wow. like Dreadsteed in the, ma in the Mage deck. Uh, I actually just have to say that of all the players I've met over the course of this, you know, I've met a lot of really cool people and a lot of really nice people, but Hotform is definitely the most interesting person I've met. Like, uh, he loves to come up to you and ask you, like, deep philosophical questions and, and not necessarily have, like, debates, but just have, like, good discussions and uh, just... Very, very cool guy. He's really approachable. I was talking to, um, to him a lot, and he's really happy and uh, just discussing everything. So a really nice, really nice guy. Yeah. No, uh, and obviously, you know, not only a nice guy, but a very good uh, Hearthstone player. Great player. Right and he's possibly a world champion if, if he wins this match. Yeah, as the, uh, as the last, uh, you know, obviously America's champion, oh, top four from America's region uh, standing, He's kind of carrying the hopes for all of us from uh, from North America. Obviously, you guys still have two two shots to win it with those Kaka and ties, but yeah. I got a hot form as my last champion. I I'm rooting for Zoro. Wow. We'll talk more about that later. Yeah, let's talk about it later. But we have game number two starting: hot form versus Zoro, uh, Rogue versus Paladin. Savits, what can you tell me about this matchup? Well, Rogue does have those blade flurries for strong board clears against the Paladin, so Rogue definitely has a fighting chance, but sometimes the minions are too sticky. There might be things like like the shield and mini bot, which can cause problems if you don't have an easy easy way to destroy the, those divine shields. And the pilot shredders, obviously. It, it can be tough to keep up with the Paladin at times. Azor has such a great opening hand. Robert, yeah. what do you think about it? Obviously, Rogue has tools to deal with something like Muster for Battle. Fan of Knives is a tremendous counter. Three mana, you get to cycle a card, and you get all the uh, menus off the board. Paladin keeps the weapon, but still, you're doing a lot of damage there. Uh, the ability to clear the board through stuff like Blade Flurry, very powerful. For the Rogue, where this matchup gets tricky, is stuff like Shielded Minibot, as he's just pointing out. Kind of the stickier minions, Paladin Shredder, where you just don't necessarily get all of the cards you need to constantly keep clearing the board. Uh, we see Salsi Deckhand, and I think this is actually a very important card in this matchup, although Hotform just plays it now. But there is a world where sometimes you lose control of the board, and you just want to be able to Salsi Deckhand, uh, play out the oil, go for the big swing uh, turn where you close out the game right there. But uh, he's using it to contest the board, which may actually prove to be incredibly wise here, as we see Zoro's opening hand is just stacked with one and two mana minions. Yeah, I think it normally is a very good move to, ca to counter the aggro decks. But uh, oh, so if you wanted that something. Uh, Personally, I like this type of approach to the matchup as a rogue player. You don't really necessarily need to try to kill the Paladin as fast as you can, but go, go for more of that board control type of strategy, where you just keep removing all the minions from the Paladin's side and eventually outvalue them in the late game with cards like Sprint. Zora is the, uh, playing the Divine Favor version. We've seen uh, the Divine Favor last game as well, so this is a card that may be key in this matchup. Uh, Zoro's strategy will be just to play all those minions and then try to play on curve. And he has a pretty good hand, I have to say. The Master for the next turn. Uh, there is there is a flurry, but do you flurry this early? Well, you don't want to flurry this early, but he might have to if he has no other play. But he does have the Pilot Shredder. Potentially, he could also go Pilot Shredder prep and uh, just do the flurry anyway. 
if Zoro is to play the must masterful battle here, Reporting which seems to be a reasonable play, especially since he has a second one in his hand right now. Yeah, he also wants to have the coin for Mr. Challenger. So it seems like that was the, the best play for the moment. Yeah, turn five, Mysterious Challenger is a play that can win the game alone. Yeah, just getting all the secrets at the same point, uh, just filtering your deck as well. So like you, you, your draws will be much better uh, because there will be a lower chance to draw into the secrets. I really like this play, by the way. He goes ahead, he plays down the Shredder, puts out the Blade Blurry. Obviously, that's not the optimal use for Blade Blurry, but since you have the prep, you have the ability to take control of the board, and he just wants to get it now, see how long he can hold on to it. I don't think he has any illusions that he's going to hold on to it for more than a few turns, because obviously this brand of Paladin is so good at populating the board. Yep, hot from has chosen the tempo style of play here, and oh, second sprint, not at all what he was looking for. What hot from really needed was more minions for his next turns. Yeah, but he's still using tempo plays, and now the big question is, do you expect the second? Sap, and even if there is a second sap, Mr. Challenger st still seems uh, pretty good. None of your wow, For all five secrets a Avenge, Redemption, Repentance, Combative Spirits, and the last one being Double Sacrifice. Merry Christmas! <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Here at World Championships, Merry Christmas from Paladin. You know what you never want to find under the tree is Uther. <laughs> like, I wanted a bike, not Uther. Unfortunately, that is exactly what Hotform has found, and uh, his hand kind of dictates that he has to sap here, and he could even go so far as to apply the oil afterwards. But the he problem could. is, is you know, you're not really He's getting down. that much done. The good news is he is actually countering Avenge for this because uh, the six six is getting buffed, and then he can sap it up for him. But Mistress Challenger can just come down next turn, bring uh, Avenge again. Another Avenge. Will come afterwards. It's interesting to see if he chooses to go for the oil here. Oil is an expensive card, and it would allow him to push for a little bit of extra damage here. But it would only buff one charge from the weapon, so he chooses to just re-equip the dagger in this situation. The, the problem with that would be also that uh, competitive spirit. So competitive spirit will buff the to one. So if you, um, it will contest the shredder. Oh yeah. Now he at least needs to use that light justice to finish off the shredder. Otherwise, I mean, his hand is extremely good. Just play down that Mysterious Challenger again if he wants to. He's Dr. Boom next turn. This is this is more the Secret Paladin experience I'm sure most of us have seen. Unless that's uh, Weblord. <laughs> what a pickup from that Shredder. He gets a, gets a Sorcerer's Apprentice. That could potentially allow him to, to cast something extra yeah, from the sprint. But both saps are already played, so that won't be happening. And Eviserate. It's not enough to remove that Mysterious Challenger. Yeah, like, Double Sap is out, so a Rogue is really good versus Paladin, not only because he can clear the board, but also because it can sap Tyrion when Tyrion lands. But now without any saps, how is he going to deal with Tyrion? Hmm, the ah. interesting decision to go for, the, go for that attack here. It will allow Zoro to get the buff on that Mysterious Challenger and also get that extra 2-1 from the Redemption. That's actually giving plus five attack, I believe, because you have quite a bit. Competitive Spirit as well. Wow. That, uh, How much damage that might is that even? Backfire a little bit. That's going to be so much damage. He's going to trade down for that second. So the second <laughs> Noble Sacrifice there. Competitive Spirit only triggering on one minion right now. So that's definitely good for Autumn. Lothep oh. from the top. Wow, yeah, with Lothep, you can actually steal the spells, even though... Dr. Boom, also, it's seven mana, Dr. Boom in the hand. Su such a great situation. He has that Blessing of Kings to buff whatever he wants afterwards. <laughs> he decides to go with the Lothep, uh, blocks the attack with the Anarchon as well, so switches off the weapons, switches off the spells. And even though, even though this is a bad matchup for Paladin, Zoro is in a great spot here. Yeah, it looks like the well game is played. over. With that low tempo, Hot From oh. won't be able to cast any of those spells aside from the preparation. And that's that's a tie. It's 1-1. One, one. Zoro versus Hot From. Zoro taking game number two. That was a fast game, guys. Sure was. That's Secret Paladin just completely demolishing the rogue this time. With that, with that uh, smart decision to keep the coin for the turn five, Mysterious Challenger, it's really paid off for Zoro big time. Absolutely. It only shows how, how strong this deck is, how strong pa the Secret Paladin is. Yeah, I also think it's worth noting that, uh, you know, when we saw Oskaka play Rogue earlier as well, uh, I feel like <laughs> all day, whenever Rogue has come around, we see uh, a hand with two sprints in it. And obviously, 
One sprint in the hand is already a very uh, heavy card, and it's awkward to deal with, but having two, we saw Hotform's hand. He just really didn't have any options. He was forced to use saps, basically just stall out the game in hopes of getting other options or getting to the turns where he could get something like another, pre or another prep into sprint, but it just never came. And I think, he, as you guys pointed out, he made some heads-up plays to try to stall out the board as long as he could. That Salsi deckhand on turn one allowed him to deal with the Secret Keeper at the time, but yeah, unfortunately, Secret Paladin is very, very good at putting minions on the board. Absolutely. And yeah, and the challenge are very strong. Pots from not finding any more minions to play after the Shredder. Just, <laughs> what can you really do? Because the strategy was good. He had the Shredder, he had the, the oil as well. He was losing the sap. So uh, you want to outtempo Paladin, possibly. But he just didn't have the follow up. And on the other hand, Zora was uh, using his cards in an excellent manner. Just pressuring, 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 putting all those big minions on the, on the board. So what do you guys uh, think is going to happen next? What decks did they choose? I'm going to say Druid a meter. Uh, Druid, uh, I do think for hot form, it, it makes more sense to go for the Druid. Um, Druid doesn't really have any, like, it's, Druid is kind of an apex predator deck. It doesn't ha really have a do match which trying to dodge. So I personally like Druid here. Uh, we'll see what he chooses to do. Yeah, well, I would like to see a, a Druid, Druid mirror. We were talking to hot form before, and we were talking to Zora as well. So let's see what Zora has to say.我的名字是红一杰今年二十二岁我来自中国赛区我的ID是CLZOLO 有空余的时间就起来上来玩一下如实什么的玩着玩着就很喜欢这款游戏最后就玩着就比较多了我买卡包的钱主要来自于就是我去参加一些比较小的比赛拿一些奖金来就是买卡包就是从游戏里面拿
I'm just imagining Zora talking to his parents and saying, Dear parents, I have bad news and good news. Bad news is I play games. Good news is I'm going to play in the World Championship and I'm flying to the United States. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really cool to see players like this. And we've seen this over the course of the tournament coming from all different regions, but uh, they're younger, they're younger, pair, or younger kids are coming out here. First time leaving the country, they get to come hang out. They get to play Hearthstone you know, professionally on these teams. And uh, it's a really cool lifestyle, and I'm, I'm glad to see it's really kind of picking up. I love the motivation as well. Like, he recognized his weakness. His weakness was that he was getting nervous. Uh, Savitz, what do you think about it? Did he overcome that weakness? He was playing many tournaments before. I think he played quite well in those the first, two, first two games and on the opening week as well. So, uh, definitely doing well on that. Yeah, he was able to tie with uh, Hot Form right here, and he is uh, a couple steps away from qualifying uh, to the semifinals. So, doing really good. All right, guys, game number three is starting right now. Hot Form versus Zoro, Druid versus Rogue. So it's not a Druid, Druid, Robert. How do you feel about Druid versus Rogue, though? So uh, traditionally, this matchup has kind of been one where the Rogue kind of skulks around, waits for the moment, and then uses a key sap to kind of put out a big tempo play, suddenly change it up with an oil, blade flurry, win the game. Um, I think the only thing that's really changed for this matchup is the inclusion of Darnassus Aspirant into Druid, which has made the Druid a lot uh, more consistent in terms of like how it ramps up its mana. But I still feel like Rogue uh, more than has a shot at this one, so it kind of just depends on uh, what hot form can get going in the early game. All right. Savitius, do you think it's uh, exactly like that, or do you have something like that? Well, I kind of tend to favor the Druid in this matchup. I think Druid just, if, if there's a wild growth, if there's inner weights, it can be difficult for the Rogue. There's, there's not always a preparation sap available. Yeah, that's absolutely true, and uh, Druid has access to the ramp elements. We can already see the wild growth in opening hand for Zoro. Uh, interesting decision. Also choosing to keep the low tap in the starting hand. Knows that rogue, rogues have a lot of spells, so that might pay off. But he did risk not drawing any of those earlier minions. And he uh, risk paid off. He's got Innervate now. He can Innervate out the shade if he wants to. Play the wild growth on the next turn. Start curving out towards it. He hopes are probably four drops. At the very least, low tap he has in hand, so... Uh, I think he's in a very good spot, and if he gets this uh, Shade of Naxxramas out early enough, there's a very real chance that the Rogue won't be able to actually reasonably contest it before it does damage. Yeah, that's starting hand from Zoro. Absolutely amazing. Turn one, Shade, into the Wild Crowd. He doesn't have a turn four play just yet, but he, he does have a couple of draws to potentially find one. On the other hand, Hot Farm's hand is not terrible. Uh, he got that sap for the early turns, and he will be able to play a four drop on turn three. He got the coin which will be important for him. Yep. And there's the Wild Growth. His, his decision, though, there was nothing else to cast. And Hot Form, he does have the Teacher and the Sap, but no preparation. That's one of the most powerful plays you can make against the Rogue on the early turns. Double Sap again. Shade of Nax Remus doesn't always feel good to play against a Rogue because what you're immediately concerned about is something like Deadly Poison, Blade Flurry. That kills it before it ever gets a chance to do something relevant. But as we see, due to the pacing of when it came out, it's going to have so many turns just sit there and grow bigger and bigger. And uh, obviously it reaches a point where you're just not going to be able to kill it with AoE anymore. And that's where things really get scary for the Rogue. Yeah, exactly. Because of the Savage or Force of Nature combo, that normally it deals force force damage. But if you have such a big Shade, it can be even more than... Oh, one turn kill. Yeah. It does extend the reach quite a bit. Darnassus Aspirant, not the turn, not the four mana play that Zora was looking for, but it's, it was still something to play. And I uh, hope from going for a coin, Pilot the Shredder. Yeah, that's absolutely nice minion. Uh, he, if you would get the backstab, you'll be able to play that Aspirant. But uh, even for, for Zora, it's. This Darnus Aspirant is not doing much, but it's still a minion, as you mentioned, being damaged to face. And this is a race now. Yeah, strong play from Zoro, recognizing that with the low tap effect, there's no spells that Hot from ca can cast at four mana. Oh, I'm still my that's effectively thin damage from the shade. And wow, not only that, but it uh, also dealt with the front half of Hot from Shredder. So much damage coming from Zoro. He has seven now. This is a force of nature that we that will be 13. He's going for the Ancient Lord to draw the cards, and uh, he can from this spot can probably even go for face. He is the one racing, he has the minions. If there's a board clear, he still has the lore. I want to point out real quick that obviously Zoro chose to bring out that shade and attack with the last turn. And one of the big considerations is he was on six mana if the Darnassus Aspirant, you know, if the Darnassus Aspirant stays alive, he goes to seven mana, he can play the Ancient of Lauren that is actually in his hand at the time. Uh, more importantly, Bringing the shade out means that there's a target. Hot Form feels like he has to get rid of immediately. He has to just stem, uh, stem the bleeding. He does not want that to keep growing. 
and it basically kind of provides soft cover for the Darnassus Aspirant. So the Aspirant survives, he gets to play the Ancient of Lore, and he is in such a good spot right now. I actually am not super sure what hot form can even do. He needs to get a preparation, he needs to get a Blade Flurry. Yeah, it's really hard for Rogue to come back from this situation. Um, Web Lord? Well, that doesn't really help him right now. None of the minions in Zoro's hand have a battle cry. So, <laughs> oh, don't wow. do anything. There's the second combo piece for, uh, for Zoro. Yeah, Savage Roar. And he can even play some minions now. He doesn't have to or go... Or Wild Growth. He could go Shredder and Wild Growth to be able to combo on the following turn. That's so good. Hotform cleared the board, but it's very deceptive. He is obviously in every kind of danger still because of the fact, as we see in hand, Force of Nature Savage Roar is going to finish him off unless Hotform has some kind of healing, which, if I remember the list correctly, he does not. And this shows the power of the Druid deck. You get Innervate on the first turn, get the Shade a bit earlier, Wild Growth to be able to get one extra mana crystal, and then another Wild Growth to get one more mana crystal. So Zora will be effectively at nine crystals with the combo where Hotform only had six. Hot from doing his best to slow down Zoro, but it is too late. Zoro already has that Force of Nature and Savage Roar combo, and he's going to take a lead in this series. Hot form does have a heal bot in there, as I recall now, but it, he didn't have it then. It doesn't matter, and this is going to be really quick game Zoro for game three, and Zoro's going to go up 2-1 on Hot form. Yeah, there's so much damage coming, so 2-1. to one. Wow. Now Zoro only needs to win with his face hunter. Yeah, and uh, obviously, uh, that's not a super difficult task. Face Hunter is one of the most maligned decks in Hearthstone because it is so efficient and uh, obviously has such a good win rate, but uh, that, was, that was a crazy game for the Druid player. That just shows you, when you get that shade out on turn one through Innervate, it just... Ugh. It was a great decision, uh, because what he could also have done was just pass turn on one, then wire group on two, maybe try playing Shade a bit later uh, to use Innervate with something like Ancient of Lore if he picks it up, right. but he decided to go like really aggressive from the very beginning, from the first turn. Yeah, well played, and everything just seemed to line up for Zoro in that game. He's definitely on the driver's seat right now. He, he will get two chances with his Face Hunter, and one of those will be against the Rogue of Hot Form, which definitely is a favorable matchup in favor of the Hunter. Yeah, absolutely, that's a great matchup. Uh, so from Hot Form's perspective, how do you approach the, the situation? What do you take to have a chance versus Zoro? Well, I think you go for the, the Druid first. Because that's the better matchup, and, you, and knowing kind of like Hot Form uh, wants to uh, wants to make it as like have as strong of a showing as possible. So take the confident matchup first, get the confidence in you, show people you can do it, show yourself that you can do it, and maybe after that he will be able to overcome the hunter with his rogue as well. It's great that you're mentioning confidence, Robert. How do you think uh, how important it is to to go with the confidence into the matchup where you are um, just facing elimination if you lose one more game? Uh, you know, that's a common thing. Uh, I come from a basketball background, and you, a lot of the players in, uh, in professional basketball say it's important to have the thing called a short memory, where you just you don't dwell, you just forget it. That game happened, you're not even thinking about it anymore, and then you go into the next game, and you just try to win it right then and there. And I think confidence is very important. Uh, hot form, obviously very seasoned. A little bit, uh, he's not as young as some of the other players, so obviously he's got that maturity. And we've talked to him a lot over the last couple of weeks, so I, I have no doubt he's more than equal to the task of trying to win this game. Absolutely. And All right. He's going to go with the Druid first, as we expected. And Zoro looking at double one drops with the coin. A little so bit early for kill command, but definitely a, a strong looking hand. So, Savis, you mentioned this matchup is a bit better than the Rogue matchup. Um, how do you feel about it? Why is it so good? Well, there are a reasonable amount of taunts in the Druid, like the, for example, Druid of the Claw and uh, the, the board clear of Druid being the swipe deals with those one toughness minions quite efficiently. So he does have a decent chance. I, I wouldn't favor the Druid at least too much, but it definitely does do way better than the Rogue. Uh, Robert, how do you think Darnus' as Aspirant uh, changes the matchup? Uh, I think the only consideration it gives is uh, that obviously if you don't kill the Darnassus Aspirant, you're inviting them, especially early on, to ramp up something to, like Keeper of the Grove, Druid of the Claw, but it really depends how committed Zoro is to that line of just going for the face, and uh, I think it'll... we'll see what the last card he gets is, but I have to imagine just based on the, the opening two one-drops, yeah, and the Wolf Rider, I don't think it would matter too much, although we see the Darnassus Aspirant now, oh, so yeah. he will have to make that decision. Yeah, that's a great card to have, but there's Eagle Hornbow um, that will help you to, to counter it. Yeah, I gotta wonder if that changes the play of playing both one drops right now. Yeah, if, if Hotform chooses to go with the Aspirant, the coin bow is going to 
deal with it. So if Hotform is thinking about that, he might go for the Wild Crowd first. But it is very tempting to play the Aspirant first because it does contest that 2-1 minion on the board. Yeah, absolutely. And even though Hotform has those ramp elements, he has Wild Crowd and he has Darren's Aspirant, he has Savage Run Force of Nature, which will be useless in the very beginning of the game. Yep. And uh, with that coin being spent from Zoro, Zoro doesn't actually have a turn to play as it is. I really like this. Uh, we've seen a couple of different variations from the Chinese players as far as the, the established decks, and their, uh, their version of Face Hunter. Uh, wow. wow, what a drop. Yeah, Mad Scientist is not only important because that's a great uh, card to play on turn two. It will provide Zoro with one of the secrets from his deck. He does still have a decision here. Does he want to clear that Aspirant to take away the Mana Crystal and the potential of Swipe, or? Keep Keeper? going to go for face. I don't think you can at this point. If you could make a somewhat inefficient trade to get rid of it, although he's going to do it, I he is doing it. Mm. That feels like a lot given away for that. And what are you looking? At? You're worried on four about swipe. You're worried about Keeper of the Grove. Maybe you're also considering that turn five comes quicker. But Shredder, maybe also. Yeah. It still just feels bad when... The problem is, is Druid gets to a point where uh, the walls come up, you can't really get through them reliably, and then you're kind of just relying on kill commands, you're relying on quick shots. The hero power is obviously very powerful, but uh, Druid can just run you back over with the combo. So, and, yeah, we see that Druid of the Claw come out, and suddenly Zora's life is a lot harder. Yep. Well, he gets the quick shots, so he will be able to deal with the Druid of the Claw. And play a Scion this, so that's not too bad. Let's get a little bit of damage into it. would be nice for Zoro to be drawing that extra card, but it, he can't really be holding on to the quick shot for now. It's not necessarily that it's too bad. It's just when you're playing specifically as a deck that is, uh, I guess, as precise in its goal as Face Hunter, it's kind of one of those things where anytime you're using one of those uh, direct damage spells to deal with something like a Druid of the Claw, and you're putting it into a Druid of the Claw with, a, a, in addition, a second minion or a second source of damage, it just feels really bad. It's not something you want to do. And, you know, he dealt with the Dar Darnassus Asper, and he was trying to stop that from happening, and then the Wild Growth came out. Nothing he can do on that. Obviously, he did everything in his power to keep Druid of the Claw off the board, but uh, it still just feels bad, especially when you look at his hand, you see a bow, you see a kill command. Emergency yeah. coolant is not super relevant. I, I love that play, by the way, Robert. Force of Nature here. Instead of just going for a minion that will not do anything, you go with the Force of Nature, deal with both, both Mad Man Scientist and with Explosion Shop, so he's denying that. Yeah, very strong play from Hot Farm. Force of Nature can be tricky to use sometimes against the Face Hunter, but he's really, he got the maximum there. Absolutely. And now to Zora, he can play that bow to deal damage. Um, Maybe he'll decide to use the hero power instead of playing Worgen and Traitor, just to use hero power every turn. That Worgen should deal two damage at some point. And it's super critical that he, he weaves in these hero powers. Uh, since he's so low on cards at this point, uh, obviously Emergency Coolant is a card, but it's not going to do a whole lot for him, at least for what he's trying to accomplish. So uh, it's very good that he's weaving in these hero powers. Uh, would like to probably find a beast next turn so that his kill command does more. Oh, yeah. Oh, an explosive trap. That could potentially give him an extra charge to that eagle horn bow if he chooses not to use it this turn. And it's interesting because you can say to yourself, well, I'm just not going to play into the explosive trap. But again, if the hero powers are coming in every turn, you're just consistently taking damage. Hunter puts you on a clock and you have to address it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll try to buy some time with this coolant. But this game is not decided yet. I feel like Hotform can still have an opening to take it. Oh, definitely. If he draws into another taunt, inch of the floor, maybe. Oh, Harrison Jones from wow. the top. Wow. Explorer's <laughs> League. Well, Harrison Jones is not a part of Explorer's League, but he is an explorer and he is like, taking that bow here. He can even swipe if he wants to, to deal with the 2 1 and limit the damage even more. Zoro I, I losing like his play. weapon. I and like that play. Not only losing his weapon, but his minion, and that's a lot of damage to face as well. Wolf Rider from the top that does. That's a great draw. More, yeah. it's, it's actually not enough. And this means that Hotform should be able to take with the Drill of the Claw as a Charger and Savage Roar. There'll be so much damage. Just 10 damage from Savage Roar. And then on the board, it will be 20, 25 at least. Yeah, and this is, this is why, even though it always looks bad for the Druid, uh, you have to kill the Druid very quickly, or else the Druid just runs you back down. Since you're not trading out the minions, Savage Roar comes out, and it just gets bad. Yep, and we are going to have a game five. Yeah, nice. game five. Hot from takes game number four and ties the series. What an amazing play. He was so low on health, but he still takes it. Wow. Uh, hot form very quickly identifies that that's the win condition. Uh, obviously, no stranger to it. And like I said, hot form really does look down on aggro decks. He, he does not believe that they are nearly as skill testing as other decks. And he prides himself on being a person who, who plays decks that are not, you know, 
as, as he considers a mindless as Agra deck. So feels very good for him to get that win, obviously tie up the series and you know prove, I, I guess, his own personal mantra when it comes to Hearthstone. Absolutely, really impressive play. And we've seen Darnus' Aspirant doing a lot of work, uh, forcing Zora to trade into it. And even the second Darnus' Aspirant was able to bring even more mana crystals and power with the Cyberfur. But uh, the last match is going to be Rogue versus Hunter. Savit, can you take us through that matchup? OK, so the Rogue he wants to get minions on the board. The rogue excels at taking board control and, and, and controlling that, but the hunter play strategy is to go for the face with those charges and with that hero power. And it is almost impossible for the rogue to interact with the hunter cards in a way that it would like to. So that is why the matchup is so poor. Antique heal, but excellent card. Might buy enough time to get those oils fast, get those extra damages to get those minions and just uh, kill the hunter before the hunter kills you, but it is extremely difficult to us. So it seems like Zoro will have a great advantage coming into the last, uh, last game. Um, Robert, is there anything that Hopfum can do? Uh, I, I think it's just very important to, as much as possible, not use his weapon to clear minions. Even if he has to use slightly inefficient forms uh, of removal, he might want to do that as opposed to actually using the dagger, because that's a very quick way to fall behind an elf. All right, so it seems like he will need a lot of confidence coming into the last game five. And we were actually able to talk to him about his confidence. Let's see uh, what he has to say. Where my confidence comes from, I guess, um, I've played a lot of video games throughout my life. And Hearthstone was the type of game that I realized that I could be 100% at. It was something that I knew I could do the preparation beforehand. I could study, I could learn all the information, and you can go into a match knowing 100% that you're as prepared as you can be. Having all of that behind you really gives you a feeling of satisfaction. There have been some really hard times when you're preparing for a tournament like this. I think the hardest time is when you're preparing the day before your match. And you know, you might be feeling confident that you have all the information there, but the stress doesn't really go away. You're gonna lose some sleep over it. You're gonna get up in the morning and you're gonna feel like, oh man, did I forget anything? Do I have all my information ready? I think one of the things I try to do to keep myself together on uh, my stream and just when I'm playing Hearthstone is to never get frustrated. It can almost feel like exercise at a certain point, but if you can keep your calm and stay in the game mode, that's the most important thing because letting your emotions slide into it never helps you. All right, guys, game number five. This is the most important moment for those two players. One of them is going to advance to the semifinals, and one is eliminated from the tournament. After this game five, we will know all four of our semifinalists for tomorrow. The top four, there's two Europeans already, and, uh, and uh, Dai Meng from uh, China. And the, the potentially Zoro could be the second Chinese player to make it through. Hot from the only North American. Still has a fighting chance. He's going to be at disadvantage going into this, into this last game. But will he be able to do it? Actually, Kuno advanced. Sorry. So they, uh, that's fine, Savit, absolutely. Zoro, Zoro might join uh, Kuno there uh, from, the, from the second region. So uh, Robert, what do you think are the chances for Hot from? He is really confident. He is a great person. Uh, on the other hand, Zoro is also a great person. We, we heard a lot about Zoro just sharpening his skills, being confident. Uh, who has the biggest confidence? Yeah. Uh, I mean, Hotform is obviously... Uh, <laughs> you ever talk to Hotform? Hotform is extremely hot, or confident in Hotform, so uh, he does not lack for that. He's a... I want to say almost borderline. He comes off almost as arrogant at times, actually, about how good he thinks he is and how far he can go in this, which is great. It is better to have an abundance of confidence than none at all, but I think Hotform just has to, you know, realize, as I said earlier, he can't really be using the dagger to clear minions. He has to be using the lever, leveraging things like SI7 Agent, Eviscerate, go for the oil kill. Uh, I think keeping Salsi Deckhand and kind of using it as he did earlier against Seeker Paladin is a very good way to get the board early, and I would be surprised if he tossed that away. Yeah, absolutely. And we can see the, the hands and the ball against Hotform is thinking about uh, keeping this. So, Savit, what do you think about this hand? Well, the, the Salty Deccan and the Agent should, should probably be kept. He, he might be considering the Eviscerate in case of an Animal Companion. Low tip, a tiny bit small. I mean, a, a tiny bit slow to, against, the, against the Hunter, so he, he probably won't be uh, keeping that one. It's very important that he got that coin, right? Yeah. SI7, yeah, Deccan. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And uh, he does replace the Eviscerate as well, because the coin is most likely going to be used on the SI agent, in which case comboing off the Eviscerate would be difficult. On the other hand, Zoro has a really aggressive opening with the Leper Gnome and the follow-up with Mad Scientist or Knife Juggler. So, Robert, do you like this hand from Zoro? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I made a comment earlier. The, the face center list that the Chinese players have been running is so refined in terms of what it wants to do. It just has an abundance of one drops. You never have to worry about not having your, your one drop on curve. And I feel like I've seen this from both Zoro and Daimong. Like, every time they played their face hunter decks, uh, they just always have one drops. And in fact, most of the time they have two, and it allows them to coin and get a very aggressive start. So I like this opening. Now, playing the knife juggler uh, automatically guarantees that that hot form is going to have. Uh, either backstab or coin SI7 agent because it always knife happens, juggler. right? It's a knife juggler. It's meant to die. Yeah. And there it is. That is the perfect That's SI agent getting it to land it on the knife juggler. It's good even on a mad scientist, but uh, with, when you when you kill off a a juggler with it, obviously there won't be anything left behind. Zero sort of with the eagle horn bow. That's also very nice. One of the better cards against the rogue. I really like the attack into the minion. The Eagle Hover is great to deal with the minions and to protect your own. Uh, on the, in this situation, Zoro doesn't have any minions, unfortunately for him. But uh, just, uh, you know, calling the aggression. And versus Rogue when you play, Rogue really wants to get the tempo as a tempo deck. And killing their minions and denying possible buffs uh, is actually really good. It's a good understanding from Zoro that, you know, Oil Rogue isn't running a ton of minions, so... Once you kind of chase off their SI7 agent, you chase away the uh, Paladin Shredder, uh, Lothebs and Azure Drakes, it's kind of it. We saw, obviously, Oskaka is running Edward Van Cleef, but that's more of an outlier and an exception to the rule than the, what is his standard in an oil rogue list. Yep, Zoro with double kill commands in his hand. That does give a lot of reach to finish the game, but he needs to deal, get some damage in before getting to use those for the lethal. Hotrum yep. going for an aggressive zap here on that two drop. He recognizes that his opponent is playing a fast version, so there, there most likely won't be anything, anything better. So going with the Talnos that we mentioned before, that for Hunter it's actually uh, really hard to deal one damage only. Right. So attacking into the Talnos with the weapon seems a bit awkward. Now I like that whole sequence from Hot Form. I think the sap's fine. Uh, you don't have to worry about something like an abusive sergeant coming down and buffing it up to do even more damage. Uh, you can put down the uh, Thalnos, which again, it's a 1-1, one -one, but it helps you not only cycle towards something else, it boosts your Blade Flurry if you have to use it, it boosts the backstab, because realistically there's actually a very slim chance it dies. It will probably stay to the next turn, so you're getting something on the board that can battle and take out an Abusive Sergeant, take out a 1 health minion, so I really like it for Hot Form. Again, it's, it's a very high IQ play and a good understanding of what he has to do to win this. Yep, definitely a strong play. And here, here Mass Scientist comes down again. Choosing to go for the hero power over the eagle horn bow, wanting to maximize the face damage. Yeah, Zoro realizes that he needs to be very aggressive and he has a lot of reach with the kill commands. Also, the second bow means that he needs to use the one somehow, and attacking the minion doesn't seem that great. So, explosive chop is gonna come down, kill the Talnus, deal two more damage to Hot Four. It's important he got rid of that trap right now, because the second eagle horn bow is more than likely coming out next turn. Uh, which is going to be really problematic, which would have been actually more really problematic if Hotform had gotten the extra value, or Zora had gotten the extra value off of the explosive trap. So even as well as Hotform has been playing this, he is already down to less than half health. Actually, Zora should win this game in two turns. So for Hotform, it's a big question. How do I win faster, or how do I stop my opponent from killing me? Well, the big game hunter that he, he brought in, obviously, as a tech preference, is not going to help him get there. Oh, that's wow. going to help him, though. That yeah, is a huge a draw for him. Huge card. Picks up the anti kill, but the best possible card he could have hoped for in this situation. Seems like he's not going to go for it just yet. He recognizes that Zoro is very unlikely to be able to deal the 14 just yet, so the heal bot can be delayed for one turn. Actually, isn't this default? Uh, there is two damage from the dogs, uh, five, uh, seven, kill command is plus five, which oh my is, well, goodness. this is 14 damage with Abusive Sergeant. And uh, just like that, because he didn't play around this specific mm. combination, Zora is counting a couple of times just to be sure exactly that he has lethal. And if we got it properly, there, that's Make exit it. lethal. Oof. Just Going through the motions, he has to be absolutely sure. He, is it enough? Is it enough? It actually, it's not, not, <laughs> this is not enough. Not enough. This is not he enough. is too damaged off right now. So he will have to wait for another turn here. He could even choose to go for a trade here with, with, that, uh, with one of the dogs. Unleash, um, yeah, but he can also use one of the kill commands because he has slowed them. Yeah, this is uh, it's not quite lethal. It's very close. And, you know, hot form, very, very smart. Obviously playing around what he thought the maximum amount of damage could be, uh, factoring in the bow and the hero power, but this is still not a great situation because it's not as if anti killbot is giving you it's giving you eight health. It That's does really help not quite a bit. Right. <laughs> it just might be enough. He plays the heal but heals back to 30 and the, it's very hard for Zoro to deal that much. 
Also goes down to seven. Zoro might be down to his last card. It's going to be a Morgan Infiltrator. This is not going to help. So it means that Hotform has it. That's seven points of damage unless he kills one the, the heal ward. But then, like, how do you win? Look, he has to go for it. That's the only way to stay in the game right now. Yeah, but but even then, Hotform can sprint for, for another Eviscerate or a... Deadly, Deadly poison, poison, a stiff breeze, this, anything will do it at this point. Oh. This game is so close. How much damage is there next turn? Seven. Okay. Not enough as well. And hope from Ken. An eviscerate off the top would end it. All That's right. not so helpful. It's time to go right for that sprint. See if he can find some second eviscerate. See if he can find the Deadly Poison. Deadly Poison is also finishing it the game. Just... That's one more. Oh, yeah, that's it. No weapon required. Buffing the Azure Drake up to seven power. And Hot that's Form it. is going to win. He is going to take the series in the best of five in the final quarterfinals match of the day. Hot Form is going on at the top four. Wow. What an impressive game. So close. Just two damage off. I, that was amazing. Uh, what Hot a Form, series. Hot Form will not be going back to the junk heap thanks to Antique Yobot. It's an incredible draw when he needed it. He used it very well, understood the maximum amount of damage that Zora could do to him, and uh, just very well played. And Hotform continues to prove that he is as good as he says he is. Yeah, he counted the mana exactly, so he knew that uh, there is no possibility to deal that extra two damage. And a uh, perfect play, even though that was a very tough matchup. Zora had an advantage coming with the Face Hunter into that rogue, and Hotform still took it. Yeah, like James Bond is now in the top four. <laughs> Um, yeah, absolutely. I can't wait till somebody photoshops some kind of like a uh, James Bond movie cover with Hot Form's face. It's going to be great. All right. I think Rachel is actually ready with our winner on stage. Let's hear what he has to say. That's right, guys. I'm down here with Hot Form, and you came out of that booth smiling, but you're sweating too. Tell me what happened during those games. Uh, that was really stressful. The first game, I got really lucky with the Dreadsteed off of Unstable Portal. That was... Game deciding. Uh, the second game, he came back with a secret paladin. Third game, I went down, and I don't know, I managed to climb it back, I guess. It was a really good series. Well, you told us in, a, in your interview that uh, Hearthstone is a game that you can practice 100% for and feel like when you come out here, you're prepared for everything. Was there anything in this match that you feel like you were not prepared for? The stress, I guess. It's, it's really tough being in there, and I mean, there's so many people cheering me on. I didn't want to disappoint them. That's your cue, crowd. Thank you, guys. Uh, I'm definitely going to go hang out in the audience after with all these cool people, so. All right, well, this is, this is big news. You are in the top four, so I just want to give you an opportunity here. We've given you a lot of opportunities to talk, but you're so good at it. Free form. Say what you want to say. Uh, not much. Just thank you guys for the cheers. I mean, that was amazing. I felt the love, and it uh, really means a lot to me. Well, thank you so much, Hot Form. That completes our bracket for the semifinals tomorrow. Let's take a look at our standings after today's quarterfinal matches. We have Tice and Ostkaka facing off, followed by Kuno and Hot Form. Shortly after, we are going to have our World Championship match, but we do have some other exciting stuff going on tomorrow. So make sure you check out those matches starting at 11 a.m. Pacific. And coming up next, you do not want to miss the Challenge Stone Finals. The players are ready to begin, so let's take a look at the match highlights on the Windows 10 Game DVR Replay.